Hey guys, welcome back to Buried Lumber. Uh, Matthew and I greatly appreciate you tuning in today. We're staying here in front of our molder planer. So we're getting ready to run some material through it and uh, try to make some S4S today. So hang on, we'll be right back, talk about it, and make it run. Okay guys, thanks for hanging in there. Uh, let's talk about our molder planer. As far as I know, we're ready to run. Matthew and I did some work on it this morning. These three gear boxes on the back, uh, went ahead and changed the oil in those. Good thing we did, one of them was very, very low, but uh, it's got all new, I didn't even know they made it. A 220, a 220 weight synthetic gear oil. So I had to buy a five gallon bucket of that, but we got it done. Uh, went ahead and changed the knives out on the top head and the bottom head. Uh, let me grab one. Let's see here. There we go. These are what's in the top and the bottom head. They're a two-sided insert. Now, I tried running it with these and they were, they didn't leave a good finish. But I didn't care, I was just doing proof of concept. So I took the lower head on the outside. I don't know if you can see that. I took this head off and took this one off and installed installed the new uh, double-sided insert carbide. These were high-speed steel, so we have insert carbide now. Uh, the purpose of the insert carbide is one, better cut quality, two, longer life, and three, you can intermix species. On one of these machines, uh, the normal heads come set at either 12 degrees or 20 degrees. The 12 degree heads are made to run a high speed steel knife for hardwoods, uh, and then the 20 degree angle is designed to run a different ground knife, still high speed steel, for softwoods and I just didn't really want to deal with that. I had these two heads so we just upgraded them to high speed uh, carbide and we can run either one it don't matter. Uh, the side cutters they're actually 20 degree side cutters and they're just for S4S. They do make uh, this style head in a four inch side cutter. Uh, I have one I need to buy another one and we could run the high speed carbide on the side heads just for S4S. And then of course our front head is just a, a hog head and it runs the insert carbide teeth. So, um, biggest thing I had to do was, I, I didn't record it. We had issues with the computer. I think it's in another video, but uh, we couldn't get the computer to calibrate with the two motors. So, let me walk around here. Right here is actually the motor that was on it. It's sitting here. Uh, I, hadn't even, I hadn't even unwired it yet. I just unhooked it from front, slid it out of the way. But uh, it had a stub shaft here and I had to go on a lathe I should have recorded it and I didn't. And I took a piece of inch and a half solid rod, turned it down to the dimensions, then hauled it out to where it would slide up over that stub shaft with a keyway. And then I actually JB welded the, the shaft and the keyway back into it. And I machined a square drive on the end that will accept our handle. So, and I bought a new counter that's all well and part of that was the lock for this spindle was in the motor so it didn't have one of these manual locks so I went in 
hard to see. Should have brought my camera with me. But I added a block here as well as a lock. So when we set the, the dimensions on that, we can lock it down and hold it. That's kind of the last thing that was holding us up was either fixing the computer and what stopped me from that was I had the widening service guy out here and when he said I don't know what it is whether it's they got a, uh, a counter on the end of the motor and there's another motor down there has the same style, style counter and he said it had a counter a controller and then the computer he said I don't know which one it is uh, he called his office and they said well it's probably the computer that computer is 35 year old technology and uh, you don't need it you don't have to have it uh, I did have to make some modifications to eliminate it but it's out of our problem now never have to worry about it uh, mechanic said he might even be interested in buying the computer and the motor if he wants it he can, we can make him a good deal on it because I'm not going to use it it's converted to manual now and that's the way we're going to keep it uh, we trained on a brand new mill that was completely manual, had no computer software to it, don't need it. It, I'm sure there's some application out there to where it's handy, but for running what we run, it's not necessary. So, all that's been eliminated. Uh, you can tell we put a few witness marks up here because you need to know when you're adjusting, you know, which way you turn. If you turn it to the left, it's up, turns it to the right, it's down. On the other one, turns it to the left, it's moving it out, turns it to the right, it's moving it in. Yes, I will learn that over time and won't need the cheat sheets, but for today, it's handy to have. Uh, all we need to do to run this, I've already zeroed this gauge to the edge scale. Uh, we've got some rainbow popper over there. We're gonna run through the edger, because it's actually 10 inch boards, and we'll knock them down to like eight and a half, and then I'll come over here, and we'll run this side cutter out to an eight inch board. We've already got our thickness set, and we'll run them through and hopefully they come out looking beautiful with a new set of knives on the top and bottom so give me a few minutes to get set up got over here i think we got 20 boards something we're going to run through the edger and then we'll bring them back run them through this winding motor planer Okay guys, we're back. Uh, we got our 20 popper boards edged. We got uh, numbers calibrated on the machine where we want it to be. Uh, we're gonna run one piece, confirm our thickness. And once we get that confirmed, I really wanna run three or four or five at a time and time it and try to make sure our uh, feet per minute is where we wanna be. We'll be around 35, 36 feet a minute. And uh, it's got a gauge on it, but I want to confirm the gauge is read right. And I'll do that by measuring. Those are eight footers, so four, they're eight, six. So four of them probably get me right where I want to be. So here's a minute, get everything hooked up. We're going to, like I say, we're going to run one, confirm our thickness. And if we like it, then we'll run the rest of them. Okay guys, we're back. Uh, we've made some uh, adjustments. I took one sacrificial board and run it. Our first one, the finish is great, uh, just a little undersized. So we run the second one, uh, need what, about five thousandths on it to get it up where we want it. Uh, 
didn't quite clear on one spot, so we made adjustments to take just a little bit more off the bottom. This is the bottom cut, which will become the, in S4S it don't matter, it could be top or bottom, but uh, we're learning. Uh, normally we're gonna run product face down, so we'll make sure we take enough off so the face will be finished. Hopefully you can see the quality of finish, but that, that's good. I'd hit that with 120 and 220 sandpaper and be done with it. So this is our two test pieces. We got a new eight footer here. We're gonna run and it should be dialed in on the thickness and we're gonna verify our width. If we like it, we're gonna run them through. So let's see what happens. Get everything turned on. Okay guys, uh, that board turned out beautiful. Made just a couple little adjustments. Uh, it's just a couple 10,000 sticks, so we, or thin, so we added just a, or took just a little bit out of the cutter head, so it'd be just a smidge thicker. We've got four boards lined up here. It's gonna give us about 33 feet, and we're gonna run them through on a timer and see where we're at feet per minute. Cause I, I don't know, uh, we're just guessing at the moment. Uh, the gauge is set. Gage is saying about 50 feet a minute, and I don't, I don't think it's running that fast. But we're gonna, we're gonna find out. So, hang on, Matthew's gonna run the timer and probably help with the out feed. I'm gonna feed four of them in there in a row and see where we're at. We did make one feed beam adjustment. Uh, it wasn't want to pull quite as hard, so we dropped the feed beam 30 seconds, 64 something like that, to put just a little more bite on it. So, let's give it a whirl.
Okay, guys. Uh, quality running it was great. Uh, we're way slow. Matthew figured it up. We're only about 22 feet a minute. Yeah. It was a minute and a half running 33 feet. So we made an adjustment. We're going to run four more and time them again. We're shooting for that happy somewhere between 34 and 38, but 35, 36 is where we'd rather be. So we're going to do it again and time it and see where we're at. If we had it, if we had our speed right, we'd just run them all and be done. But we're still working our way through it. So let's fire everything up, do it all again.
Okay, guys. <laughs> if you can see the smile on my face, I'm happy. Uh, that was a 100% absolute success. Tickled death with it. Yes, we're still learning. Yes, we're still making mistakes. Yes, we will get better, but yes, it is running. And it produced a quality product. Uh, that's an Easter egg for you sitting over there. You'll figure it out eventually. Leave, drop the comments below what you think it's going to be. Matthew and I got a project we got to work on here soon. Uh, and that's going to do it. But look at the machine. Uh, Matthew, bring you over here a little closer. The vacuum system is an absolute win. This is all the sawdust in the machine from running them few little boards. None down in the head here, none down in here. I am overjoyed at the vacuum system doing its job. There's nothing in there. It just falls down a big hole anyway. Uh, I, I was going to get you a shot of the, the uh, sawdust coming out, but we were so busy I forgot about it. We'll do it on another video. That's a pretty good stream of sawdust coming out the other end. Uh, one thing I'm learning real quick is we may need to start cutting our boards just a wee bit thicker. We have been actually. On Since our, these, we cut them a lot thicker. Yeah, these we cut a long time ago, but uh, if you're cutting on a wood miser at one inch and it draws up to 15 sixteenths or less, you just barely gonna have enough to two side clear. So we're taking, uh, we're probably taking 30 thousandths here and you're automatically taking 20 thousandths on the outfeed cutter and then the rest of it's coming off the top. And we're just floating on the edge of whether we get top and bottom clear, so. In the future, all my one inch boards that's going to do this is probably going to end up being an inch and an eighth. You don't need a lot more, just a little bit more. Uh, we don't like cutting wood that we're going to plane off and throw away. So, some things we're learning. Uh, this bottom head, we got it dialed in now. We're, we got it dead set on a three quarter inch board, and we got the dial indicator adjusted. And if we want to run some inch and a half tomorrow, we can spin that dial indicator up to 1.50 and it'll be within a couple ten thousandths of an inch and a half. And that let me tell you, you won't find it on your Stanley tape measure. <laughs> I measured these boards and they're uh, 0 0.751, 0 0.498, and you lay a tape measure on there, your eyeball can't see that ten thousandths difference. But we're shooting for as close as we can get perfection. Uh, you always got to have a little variance, it's wood. Uh, we did it off camera, but we made an adjustment to this outfeed neoprene roller. Uh, that's one of the things we learned from our lighting tech. There was some adjustments in there to change the cam of it, and we got it applying enough tension now to help pull the board out. Plus, we loosened up a little bit on our pressure shoe. All that pressure shoe there is when that board, after it comes off that head here, and this hand hits it. If you don't have that pressure shoe in there, it'll chatter. And it don't have to mash it down. It just needs to hold it. So when it goes across that cutter, before it gets to this roller, it can't sit there and chatter. And it was a little tight. Things we're learning. I mean, I've never run one of these before. I've watched them run. But uh, I am overjoyed. How about you, Matthew? Oh, finally, happy is done. And then actually start making money with it. Yeah, we're... Uh, we haven't run any tongue and groove yet, and that's because we're waiting on some knives. Uh, the only knives I currently have are tongue and groove hardwood flooring, and I got some I need to run, but not first. Um, next week, we should have our tongue and groove V-groove knives that they remade for us, and we've got a mountain of pine that I'd like to run for us. It's going to coat the inside of this building. Not that I'm in a hurry to get this done, I'm just in a hurry to make sure that we can produce the kind of quality that we're going to give to the customer. And I'd hold right rather really learn on a couple stacks of our wood. If we make a boo-boo, throw it away, no big deal. But I don't want to do that to customer's wood. So uh, I did order a set of nickel gap. We've got a huge order for it coming up in a couple weeks. First half's in the kiln. It'll probably come out next week. Put the second half in there. When that comes out, we got a bust of that to run. And... Uh, we did get our adjustment dialed down. Uh, we were too slow, we're about 22 feet a minute, and then we were way too fast. <laughs> I think we was upwards of 40, 40 plus, because 
I was struggling to keep up with it. I told Matthew, I said, ain't no way I could feed it all day like that with eight foot boards. So we dialed it back. Uh, we run out of boards, but we're somewhere in that range, 32, 34 to 38. Next time we run it, uh, we'll do the same test again and try to get it dialed in. Because you can visibly feel, I don't think you could ever see. Uh, this was a board we run slow, and it's just smooth as glass. And then this one we run too fast, and I can feel it in my fingertips, a little planer snot. The board is running too fast. And this is where we was running our last set. And there is just a little planer stop in there, but it's acceptable. This is not, this is running too fast. And that's that's what we were doing it for. Let's look at our wood. We never looked at the wood. This is gonna be some pretty stuff to work with. It's uh, not the prettiest rainbow poplar I've ever seen. But it is pretty, and some of it is uh, wormy and spalted. Look at that purple. Isn't that gorgeous? I'll try to talk a little lighter. It started raining. Look at that. That is just beautiful. <coughs> so, I consider it a win, guys. Uh, it's been, this is almost the end of November for us. October. Oh, almost the end of October. Yeah, it's been almost 10 solid months of pushing and pushing every chance we could. You know, some things you just have to wait on, but doing our part to stay ahead of the people we were paying to do their part. And we're here. I am tickled to death. I mean, um, there's a financial aspect to it. Don't get me wrong. It, we, we like to make money, but it's a challenge. You know, Matthew and I like taking on a challenge, and this has been one. Uh, we proved it could be done, proved it could work. Um, yeah, we run into some issues that the nice we hadn't have, you know, buy parts and pieces, but hey, that's life. This machine, new, somewhere, what, 80 to 120 range, depending on how you spec it out. That's a lot of money. Uh, we got a whole lot less than that in this one. And if there was a brand new one sitting here, you still got all this money spent. You still gotta buy tooling, you gotta buy knives, you gotta buy this setup stand, you gotta buy this piece, this piece. You gotta do all this three-phase electrical. Our only shortcut was buying a budget-friendly machine that looked good, and we gambled. Uh, I've gambled more on less, so <clears throat> we were very fortunate, very blessed that everything the majority of it worked as supposed to. The computer system crapped out, but I really didn't want it anyway. If we went and bought a deal today, it wouldn't have a computer on it. It'd be just like it's completely manual. Uh, um, they have some new things on the new ones that make it being manual a little easier, but we could, Matthew and I could easily run this. Uh, yeah, we could easily set it up. What else, anything? Uh, Nothing I don't know. I'm tickled to death or a vacuum system. It is. <clears throat> now, granted, we're not taking a tremendous amount off this wood. You know, we're we're started at about anywhere from 0.87 to 0.9 thousand stick, and we're taking it 750. So we weren't really taking that much off. Now, over here, I've got a whole bunch of white oak. You know, there's a whole bunch of white oak. We sawed every bit of it at an inch and a quarter. If I'm not mistaken. Maybe an east eighth, but I think it's east a quarter. We did five quarter on it because I know it'll draw up a lot, and I wanted to make sure that we had enough to take enough off to make it clear, even if we had to run it twice. If we had to run it basically S4S and then turn around and run it again as three quarter tongue groove hardwood floored, I'd rather do that than come up with boards that didn't have a good finish on them. So, live and learn. That's going to do it. Uh, can't tell you how much we appreciate you watching, guys. Tell you, friends and neighbors, uh, we're growing by leaps and bounds. It's all because of you guys. Uh, <clears throat> trying to think of anything else that we didn't cover. I, I get questions after the video comes out, and I'm like, hmm, should have covered that, should have covered that. Uh, I think I did. This is the only part we technically had to buy when we turned it into a manual. We had to buy a new counter. I put it on this side because I already had this one set. But that's a new counter from whining. Uh, they're not bad. 
trust me, it's a whole lot cheaper than trying to fix something that's been out of service for 35 years or so. But uh, I believe we're gonna do it. Leave it there, guys. Uh, stay tuned. Like I say, that uh, Rainbow Popper, that video might not be out for a while, but it's it's been uh, S4S. We can take it up to the other building, and when we get time and have the mental clarity to do woodworking, we've got a woodworking project we got to do. So, thanks for watching, guys. If you would uh, give a special shout out to Solomon at Third Beard Fishing. Him and Matthew do all our videos. Uh, also, him and my daughter do uh, 525 Designs. Check out their website. They got my daughter's always doing something with her embroidery machine, making stickers and stuff. It, it's hilarious. But they also do designs. Uh, don't have a shirt on. They do have our bearded lo lo lumber logo. They done that. They've done a lot of logos for different customers. They did the logo for Green River Sawyers. Yeah, Green River Sawyers. They did theirs. So they'd be glad to help you out. His contact info will be in the description below. As always, we appreciate you watching, guys, and we'll see you back at the mill. Thank you for watching. Here's a video selection and a playlist suggestion. Click here to subscribe for more great content. We'll see you at the mill.